Hey, Caroline. Hi, Lucy. Hey, Bo. How are you? Good. How are you? <laughs> Two presentations in one day. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I actually did that yesterday for uh, Pearl. Um, we had two sites that are basically ready to begin, you know, like had IRB approval. And so I did their like site activation meetings yesterday and I was like two pretty much like back to back. So I know I know how hard and tiring it is to, um, you know, present twice in one day. <laughs> Caroline has to work hard. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. So for your site meeting, you have to do it to one by one. Yeah, I do one by one just because every clinical site has their own specific enrollment goals and like little nuances that are specific to them. So I tailor each training to that clinical site. Oh, that's lots of work. Yeah. You know, after a while you get used to it, but um, the first one's always hard. Mm -hmm. I see Anne and Stephanie on. Is that right? That's right. Hi. 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 Um, I don't think we're expecting anyone else. Um, so we can start. Um, let me just pull up the slides. Share my screen first. Does everyone see my screen? Yes. Yes. Okay, great. Great. All right, so let's get started. Um, so welcome to the Dexter Tech Training Call um, for the Pearl Fertile Health Study. Um, attending, um, I don't think it's going to take this long, maybe about three minutes. Um, so let's see how things go. Um, so my name is Caroline. Um, so Anne and Stephanie, I've been working with you getting you certified to scan for um, the Pearl SH study. Um, and then we have Bo Fan, who um, will be the person um, centrally analyzing the DEXA scans. Um, with you, so um, I'm excited to be working with your site. Have you worked with Anne and Stephanie before? Maybe she can't hear me. Anne, have you worked with Bo before? Um, I and uh, helped me to um, doing the um, HRPQCT. She's helped me oh. to set up one of the chair um, cushions for the chair. Thank you, Anne, for doing that. Oh, you're welcome. Oh, pretty. okay. All right, so. Um, First slide, the overview for the Pearl SH study. So we'll be painting just the hip, spine, and forearm only at the baseline measurement. Um, so our responsibilities as a DEXA QA center, uh, we will provide an operations manual, which um, was which was sent um, a couple of days ago, and I think a couple of months ago, and I also provided a quick reference guide as well. I will also be providing trading. Um, working with you, um, getting certified to scan, and we'll also be providing any technical support throughout the study. Uh, we'll also be analyzing scans centrally and keeping a uh, central archive here at UCSF. Um, as we're analyzing the scans, uh, we will be assessing the quality of acquisition. Um, so if there were any suboptimal scans, we'll provide you tips on how to improve um, on positioning. Um, and then there will be some scans that um, may be deemed unacceptable, and those won't be included in the study data. Uh, therefore, we may request um, repeat scans. We'll also help monitor longitudinal scanner performance and organize a cross calibration at the beginning of the study. So we have a separate um, set of phantoms that um, will be shipped to you um, with instructions, and you'll um, um, scan those phantoms, upload them to our RAE site, and we'll take a look of, at those scans and make sure that everything looks okay before we um, ship it off to the next um, Pearl site. 
All right, site responsibilities. So each site must identify a lead deck to tech who will be the primary contact for the study. Um, each tech will um, read and understand the Pearl SH MOP, um, the GE Lunar's user's guide, and be certified by us to acquire scans. Um, each site is also responsible for scanner maintenance. All right, moving on to participant scanning. So this is just kind of a general um, process. The study coordinator will schedule the appointment. Um, they will also verify if the participant is pregnant or not, and that these procedures will be different by um, clinic. Um, they'll also um, provide you a DEXA transmittal completion form. Um, they will fill out um, section A, which has information um, for the scan biography. Um, and then the next slide um, is the transmittal form. So I'm just going to point out um, what the study coordinator will um, complete, which is section A's in the gray box. And the fields are pretty identical to the GE Lunar scan biography. And then right at the bottom, this says this section completed by the study coordinator or DEXA technologist. So we did make a change to this. Um, the study coordinator um, will be responsible obtaining the weight and height um, for each participant. Um, I'll go into this uh, more in detail later um, later on in the slides. All right, so the GE Lunar Biographical Fields. Um, so in the primary screen um, for the last name, you enter the participant initials. Um, first name is the clinic ID, which is a two-digit code. Uh, patient ID um, is the participant ID number, and this is the format for um, each participant. Um, now I'll just move down to date of birth. So you want to enter January for month and one for day for each participant, and then enter the year of the participant's birth. This is just for security um, and privacy purposes. And then you'll re um, receive the height and weight on the transmittal form. Um, and then <clears throat> on the secondary screen, um, make sure you enter your tech ID, which is a three-digit code. Um, and Stephanie, um, you haven't received that yet. Um, once we go through the training call, um, the next couple of days, I will provide you a tech ID. Um, you won't be fully certified um, yet. Um, as a reminder, uh, you will have to send your um, first three participant scans. Um, and we would check for you know, your scan acquisition, making sure that everything looks okay. Um, and then we'll let you know, um, based on those scans, um, whether you are fully certified. Right, moving on to participant eligibility and preparation. So on the DEXA completion and transmittal form, um, there is a question um, about reproductive potential. So if it's marked yes, then you want to verify that the woman is not pregnant before scanning. Um, and um, some of these requirements um, require a negative urine pregnancy test on the same day as a scan, while others just accept a verbal report from the patient. So it just depends on your institution. Um, and then you want to verify that the participant was not involved in any studies involving barium or radioisotopes one week before the DEXA scan. Um, if you did, if you were involved in a study within the last week, then you do not obtain the scans and the DEXA visit will need to be rescheduled. Um, if the participant has taken a calcium supplement, you can proceed with the scan, um, just noted on the scan log. Um, and then ask the patient to change into a gown without snaps, um, and then remove all clothing except underwear and bra. Uh, you probably have to ask if the participant has any metal in their undergarments, because um, you don't want any metal or any plastic objects remaining on the participant. Um, the exceptions are an insulin pump and CGM, which we'll talk um, in the next couple of slides. Um, and then you want to remove any jewelry that will show in the scan field. It is okay to leave rings and earrings on. All right, so specific preparation for type 1 diabetes. So you want to ask the participants if they would like to check their blood sugar level. Um, and you want to allow time for this prior to scanning. This is um, to ensure that hypoglycemia does not occur during the scan. 
Um, and these are these devices, um, the insulin pump and continuous glucose monitor. These are things that the patients may be wearing, which we'll talk further on the next slides. All right, so insulin pump. Um, so this is a traditional pump design, which includes a small box containing controls, and the pump is connected to the infusion set by tubing. Um, the box should not be exposed to the x-rays of the DEXA scan. So you want to have the participant detach the pump before you start scanning. Um, the infusion set is not removed, so it won't be damaged by the x-rays. So here's another form of an insulin pump, a um, patch pump um, that is directly attached to the skin. Um, this type of insulin pump is an exception. Um, it doesn't have to be removed. It won't be harmed by x-rays, so it can stay in place during the DEXA scan. Okay, moving on to the continuous glucose monitor, CGM. So it includes a sensor transmitter unit that's attached to the body and a small wireless monitor that's carried in a pocket or clipped to the waist. The wireless monitor should not be worn during the scans. Um, however, the sensor transmitter unit can be left in place during the scans. Um, so however, the effects of X-ray exposure on the sensor transmitter unit is not fully known, therefore participants should be advised to verify the performance of the CGM after the DEXA scan by checking their blood sugar. And this is to make sure that it's reading blood sugar levels accurately. All right, so if any of these devices are in the scan field for the left hip scan, scan the right side instead. All right, moving on to scan acquisition. So for the hip, you wanna scan the left hip unless hardware prevents, scan the right and then use the scan mode recommended by your GE Lunar Scanner. Um, adjust the rotation of the femoral shaft by holding the ankle and knee joint. Um, the shaft should be parallel with the long axis of the table. Um, you can use the foot positioner to rotate the leg and keep the shaft straight. Um, if the femoral shaft is either too abducted or adducted, um, stop the scan to adjust the femoral leg. All right, so here is an image of a properly acquired and analyzed hip scan. So the femur here is straight and rotated properly. You can tell that the, because there's no lesser, uh, because the lesser trochanter is barely visible and it's also nicely centered in the scan window. All right, moving on to spine scan acquisition. So again, use the same scan, use the scan mode recommended by the scanner. Um, you want to position the participant in the center of the table um, using the leg positioner to help. Um, the spine scan should be imaged in the middle of the ROI, and a little bit of the iliac crest should be visible. Um, that ensures that L4 will entirely be in the scan and not cut off. Uh, scan should include L1 through L4. If the scan is not imaged properly, um, if, the, if you notice that um, on the window screen, that the spine is crooked, um, abort, reposition, and start the scan again. Okay. All right, so here's an image of a properly acquired and analyzed spine scan. Um, so you'll notice here that the iliac crest is visible and that L1 through L4 is um, in the scan field, and the spine is straight and centered. All right, moving on to forearm scan. So you wanna scan the non-dominant forearm. If this forearm is fractured or contains hardware, scan the other forearm. Use the scan mode recommended by your scanner, and make sure that the participant head is kept clear of the scanner arm. Um, make sure that the participant is seated comfortably um, to reduce the ch chances of motion. Um, I don't think it's noted here, but if you do see motion, um, you should abort the scan and um, rescan the forearm again. All right, moving on. Um, so here is an image of a properly acquired and analyzed forearm scan. So the forearm is pretty straight and centered in the scan window. All right, moving on to scan analysis. Um, so analyze 
the DEXA scans using your clinic's standard analysis procedure. Uh, you'll be providing a report of the hip and spine to the study coordinator. However, you do not need to provide the forearm report. All right, reports to participants. So um, you can inform the participants that their hip and spine DEXA scan results will be given to them by the study coordinator. All right, reports to the study coordinator. So again, you will provide a report of the hip and spine DEXA results um, for each participant. Um, and you will also return the completed DEXA completion and transmit a form as well. All right, moving on to scanner maintenance by the DEXA tech. So scan the GE Lunar and Luminous Spine Phantom. Every day is subject to scan, but at least three times per week. Um, I know, Anne, we've uh, um, talked about this before. We have an exception for your site, and I've noted that. Um, I believe it's uh, once a week and then on days when participants are scanned. Um, and then make sure you schedule your annual preventive maintenance with GE Lunar. Um, if there were any services done on your scanner, such as a um, preventive maintenance, um, send us a copy of that service report. Okay, moving on to electronic scan transfer. So um, the research analysis environment, RAE, this is a UCSF platform, um, which allows you to upload DEXA scans and uh, your participant log to us. Um, and I think a couple of days ago, um, I saw an email from our UCSF IT, Warren. Um, I believe you are able to access RAE? Yes. Okay, good, good. Were you able to um, log in successfully? Um, I, yes, I've logged in. I just have to set up the um, Duo two-factor authentication. Oh. Okay, 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 good. All right, so um, uh, the instructions to upload the scans is in the Perl um, SH mop that we sent to you. So it's in the appendix. Um, so it would be a good idea to, if you want, you can do a test upload, whether it be a spine phantom scan or a PDF of, of just, you know, a blank piece of paper. Um, you can just do a test upload and see if you are if you um, are able to upload the scans or the files successfully. Um, and then you can also let me know if you do it so I can check to see on my end if I got it okay. And I think Stephanie, um, Stephanie, um, it looks like are you are you in the same step as Anne, or do you have to sign the attestation form? Do you know where what step you're in? The same you're step as Anne, yeah. I signed this. Okay, okay. <laughs> okay, okay, good. So then you should be receiving an email from from Warren in regards to the next step. Next steps would be the duo um, step that uh, Anne is um, completing right now. So I'll I'll, um, I'll check I'll check and see um, what you need to do and get back to you. All right. So moving on to um, what we're expected of you as far as uploading scans. So on a weekly basis, um, you should be uploading participant scans with a completed scan log. Um, and then around the beginning of each month, you will include um, all of your spine phantom scans um, and upload them to the RAE site. Um, and if you have any, if you had any um, services done on your scanner, then you can um, also upload a copy of the service report with your spine phantom scan. All right, forms. So these two forms, you'll be pretty familiar with these forms during the study. Um, you will be completing part of the transmittal form and you will be completing the scan log um, every time you upload scans to us. So for the DEXA completion and transmittal form, you will receive this form from the study coordinator um, and that, um, and you'll need this to um, enter in the scan biography in the GE Lunar software. Um, and then as far as the scan log, um, any scans that you're uploading to us, um, you will have to list them on the participant scan log. So these are um, our forms. 
So for the completion and transmittal form, um, as I mentioned before, Section A is what the study coordinator will be responsible for completing. Um, and then Section B, um, you will complete this um, and we can go through it together. So um, for Section B, you would enter in your tech ID code um, and question one, um, entering the date of the DEXA scan, DEXA visit. Um, number two is a question on um, eligibility. Let's go on to the next page. Okay, so um, you would complete question two. So for 2A, is participant a woman with reproductive potential? Um, if yes, is the participant pregnant or possibly pregnant? Um, and then if the participant is, does not have reproductive potential, you can skip to 2B. Um, so for 2B, um, you want to check any boxes that apply. So if they were pregnant or might not be pregnant, or if their weight um, exceeds the machine limit, um, if the participant um, re refuses the um, DEXA scan, or if they had any contrast in the past seven days. So if any of these boxes are checked, then um, they should not proceed with the DEXA scan. Um, and however, if they are eligible, um, you can proceed with questions three to six. Um, so question three is um, regarding um, the insulin pump or CGM. Um, so this is also a reminder of what you need to um, tell the participants if they um, are carrying a CGM or an insulin pump. And then question four is performing the scans. Um, um, if they were completed or not completed, you check that box under completion status. And if it wasn't completed, um, you can check any of the bo boxes that apply. And if there's any um, comments that you can, that um, any additional comments you want to make, you can enter them here on the far right. And then um, number five is transmitting scans and scan log to the DEXA QA Center. So when that is done, you can um, enter in the date um, when that was uploaded. And then last question is six, um, comments of any problems regarding eligibility protocol, collection, or transmission. All right, so um, this form is the scan log. So it's pretty self-explanatory. You have the date of the DEXA visit. You enter in the ID, the initials, and then you circle which scan type. You want to write the scan ID, which is the um, the scan file name. Um, and if there were any that need to be flagged, um, check that box under flag and then write in your comments or reasons for flagging the scan. All right, so this is our last slide. Um, so if you have any questions regarding the MOP, uh, if you have any questions regarding scan acquisition, um, send um, an email to myself or Bo. Um, and if you prefer to talk over the phone, we can always um, schedule um, a phone call together. So Anne, um, Stephanie, um, do you have any further questions? Hi, yes, it's Anne. I have just two questions. Uh, thanks for the presentation. Uh, for the dominant arm, um, so we're going to be scanning the non-dominant arm. I just wondered if there was any particular standardization uh, or standard method you'd like us to use to establish uh, what's the dominant arm. Like, for example, we usually go with the writing hand. Um, Bo, do you have any... Um... An answer. I know that you, you, you know, Bo mostly scans for studies. So, um, Bo, do you have any preference? Um, yeah, that's right. Uh, using the uh, writing arm, that's fine. Or you can say when you hit the ball, which arm you are using. So, okay, great. Yeah. Okay. And, um, sorry, I'm writing that down. <laughs> okay. Um, my second question is when we send the quality control data uh, monthly to 
uh, or upload it to RAE. Um, what exactly would you like us to upload? Is it the like the scan files, um, or would you like us to upload like to export the data set, or um, what would you like there? Um, the, the, scan, the scan files. Okay. Yeah, because we're going to um, upload those scans into our um, database. Um, so we, we need those actual um, scan files, not the reports or not the not the export. Okay, great. Thank you. And we will be doing central analysis too for the phantom scan. So yeah, we definitely need the scan files. Got it. Okay. Okay, were there any further questions? Great. All right. So, um, Anne, Stephanie, thank you so much for attending the training call. So, like I said, in a couple of days, I will provide you a tech ID. And if you have any further questions regarding the MOP, the QRG, the training slides, um, please feel free to let me know. Hey, All right. Thank you thank so you. much. Have thank a good you. day. Bye. Bye bye.